Hashanere makose. Ini ni makose ni ni na makose. Keep on worshiping. Hallelujah. I feel his presence in this place. I don't know about you, but I long for his presence. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Thank you for showing up, Father. Thank you for this touching us. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, so I don't know about you, but I always need him. Hallelujah. Thank you for reigning supreme in this place. Reigning in us, Lord God. Keeping your hand on us, Lord. Keeping us safe right now. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. If you're grateful, hallelujah, clap your hands in this place. Hallelujah. We're grateful for so much. Hallelujah. I thank God for his presence. You know, that's an honor for God to show up. It is an honor for God to show up. God will meet you anywhere if you're sincere. Meet you anywhere. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I glorify you. I magnify your holy name because you're worthy to be praised, oh God. Father, I pray that I decrease, that you may increase, not my words, but your words. Let your words come out these lips of clay right now. Let it penetrate the heart of your people, those that are here and beyond right now, Lord God. I ask that your words be like a two-edged sword right now, Lord God. Person the hearts of your people. Bring him forth your, the nutrients that you want them to have. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Tonight, God been, been dealing me a while about boundaries. This is going to help us with our walk. Tell somebody in here, we need boundaries. We should know boundaries by now because COVID-19, we, we had to be, what, what, six feet apart from each other? We needed boundaries, but I'm not talking about those type of boundaries. I'm talking about spiritual boundaries. I'm going to go in there to understand before we can understand the definition of boundaries. A boundary is a divided line. And geographically, a boundary is that which marks the end of one property or jurisdiction in the beginning of another. In personal relationship, a boundary is what divides one person from another. So each can have separate identities, responsibilities, and privileges. A boundary creates necessary spaces between individuals, healthy boundaries define expectations and show respect for others. Now, biblically speaking, boundaries are related to self-control. I'm going to say that again. Biblically speaking, boundaries are related to self-control. The, the Bible commands us to control ourselves, whereas our human nature desires to control others. Titus 2 and 12. If left unchecked, our natural desires run amok over others. Personal boundaries help us to limit our selfishness, inclinations to control uh, to, or to manipulate others. Likewise, boundaries protect us from those that have no self-control who wish control us, to control us. A person with clear, healthy boundaries communicates to others what is and is not uh, permissible saying, in effect, this is a jurisdiction, and you have no right to interfere. I'm going to say this again. A person with clear, healthy boundaries, you hear that? Communicates to others what is and is not permissible. Saying, in effect, this is my jurisdiction. And you have no right to interfere. So, that should be our daily stance every time, every time we walk as a believer. When Satan see you, it should always be your response. Your presence alone should exude that. You have no right here. Don't interfere. 
this should be your stance at all times. Now, what we're going to go is practicing and understanding a lifestyle of boundaries. Before I go into this story, I'm going to say a little story I was thinking about. I was talking to my wife about it. Should I say something about it? Um, we wanted to go to a, um, a coffee bar. Nice place. It was, looked nice inside. looked elegant. And uh, she was telling me about the place, so we thought we would go. After church. On a Sunday. Right after church. No, no. Coffee bar. <laughs> Not a bar. <laughs> Look at this little pasta. A coffee bar. But they had food. I think it's, no, it wasn't a coffee bar. It was, it was called a coffee place. I don't know what to call it, but it was just nice. Black owned. I, I liked it. It was, it was very sophisticated. But when I walked in there, I seen some things I didn't supposed to see. It was like walking in the club. You had a woman with the short skirts on, tight, tight, this and all that in there. I looked at my wife. I said, baby, you know I love you. We don't need to be here. It's not holy. So we left. Boundaries. You need to know your boundaries. You need to know where you can go, where you can't go. And a place like that, it didn't exude righteousness. I want to go where I see righteousness. I want to go where I see holiness. I know everybody ain't going to be thinking the way I think. I know everybody's not going to, going to you know, but, but if I see too much of that, and you don't know how to cover yourself up, I'm not in the right place. If, if all this is tucked up right here, not, no, no, that's, that's not righteous. I'm still a man. I'm still a man. And as I talk about it, I'm going to talk to my sisters too. When you come in the house of God, Let's watch how we wear our clothes. We got brothers in here still dealing with some stuff. They came to church because it's what? Safe. Now, I'm going to talk to my brothers. Let's watch what we're wearing. Let's try not to watch wear these tight shirts showing our muscles. We got some sisters still struggling with some stuff. I'm being real. I'm still talking about boundaries. This is real stuff. And this is stuff that, that would trip us up that we don't even know. We're trying to figure out why I'm dealing with this and that. Because you're seeing it on a regular. Even the thing that you're watching on TV. The little glimpses. It's the little things. It's, it's not the big things. It's the little things. And I want us to stay focused on where we're going. God wants us to be focused. Let's go to uh, Genesis. I want somebody to read that for me. 212, 17. I mean, 216 through 17. I can't find it. I'm going to beat you to it. Now, even in the beginning, God put a boundary. And God told Adam and Eve, any other tree in here you can have. That looks pleasing to your sight. It's yours. But this one right here, don't touch. I'm going to let you have anything. Since a lot of times when we, when we think about boundaries, we think about limitations. It's not much of a limitation. It's actually freedom. You mean to tell me God gave you all this right here? And it was just this one thing he said, don't touch. It's the same with ties. I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you a wife. I'm going to give you kids. I'm going to give you a car. I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you everything. 
everything you want. I just want to watch. You can have the house. You can have the kids. You can, I just want to watch. Even in that, he's teaching boundaries. Don't take my money. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to the story of, uh, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to talk about it. No, I'll go there. I was thinking about the story of, of Potiphar's, uh, Joseph and, and the Potiphar's wife. Let's go to Genesis 39, 7. When you said, say amen. I'm going to read this. Amen. Now, and after a while, his master wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to my bed with me. But when he refused with me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the, in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in the house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, she was still pulling after him, y'all. He refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day, he went to the house to attend to his duties. And none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out the house. Tell somebody here you better run. Because we're living in an hour right now. Satan is trying to catch you on everything. On Facebook, he's trying to catch you on Instagram. He's trying to catch you on anything that he can catch you on. And if you watch it, the thing is, Facebook can be used for a good tool. But it can also be used as a trap. Because I'm going to tell you, after you look at one thing, you're looking at something else, then something else, then something else, then something else. Oh, that's funny. Ha, ha, ha. Then something else. But through all that is leading you down somewhere you don't need to go. You feed your spirit by what you hear and what you see. You hear me? You feed your spirit by what you hear and what you see. Then again, I was thinking about the story about Lazarus. I mean, not Lazarus, but the prodigal son. And we don't have to go there. I'm just going to talk about it. But it's, if, write this down. It's Luke 25, 11, 32. Luke 25, 11 through 32. We all know this story. The prodigal son went to the father. He said, give me of my portion. I want it now. All right. Father gave it to him. He spent up all what he had. The other brother was still there. The big brother was still there. But after he spent all his money, he didn't have nothing. We know the story, right? Lost everything, lost his new friends. Gained a whole lot of friends when he got money. But when he got down to his very last, to his very low, to his very low point, he was actually on his knees. And it says that he was eating out a trough, a pig trough, eating slop. That's when he realized at that lowest point, at my father's house. At that point, that's when boundaries kicked in. He understood, I didn't have no limitations. I need a limitation. I need something to stop me from myself. At that point, that's when he recognized, I got some issues. Tell somebody, you better know yourself. You better know what you can take and what you can't take. You better know what you can watch, what you can't watch. Because we got a devil that's out to kill you. No. You didn't hear me. He out to kill you. He want believers. Believers. This is spirit like this transgender. A transgender don't even want another uh, uh, transgender. You know what a transgender want? A straight man. Do you see how bold this devil is? 
Satan has gotten real bold in the time that we're living in. So if God tell you don't go to a party, young folk, you better not go to that party. I know that because I remember. I was a kid. I want to go to a party, and God said, you better not go. When guess what? They start shooting. I had to jump over the fence, run through an alley, get to my truck. So God is talking to y'all too. So I'm going to be talking to everybody. I'm going to be talking to singles. Better, better watch out who you, you, you put in your life. If they don't know the Lord, and don't even look at them because they say they know the Lord. Be a fruit inspector. The Bible said, know them that the fruit that they bear. That's not enough to, for you to tell me you love the Lord. I'm, I'm thinking back. I remember when I would bring friends to the house, I would tell my dad, and I, I thank God for it because I'm like that now. And I would say, Dad, this is my friend. And my dad would look at, look at me and say, no, he's not. I'm like, Dad, that's my, my friend. Uh, hey, Negro, uh, no, he's not. Once I get to know his people, know his, his mom and him, then we'll determine if that's your friend. You're my investment. And I'm like, I was mad, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it now because I understand when he said, you are my investment. We put a whole lot into you. We don't want somebody to change your mind and change your ideas, the things that we put in you. My mom taught me how to pray. My mom taught me how to seek God. Even when I was going through all my craziness as a teenager, I still believed. So parents, still pray. Because by you praying, it builds boundaries. It's teaching your kids boundaries. I still remember, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I still remember, man, when I was, I think I was about like in the third grade. Second grade. No, I was in second grade. They had a party going on, and the teacher said, James, why don't you dance? <laughs> you know what I said? Because I knew the music wasn't right. I said, no, nah, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> she said, what? <laughs> what? She said, am I, so I'm going to go to hell? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I just told her, I said, you keep on dancing to that music, that's not godly music, you'll go to hell. <laughs> but the thing is, I had a reverence for God, even outside of church. I knew that music went right. All I'm saying, let's teach our babies what Grandma Neum taught us. Because they won't depart from holiness. They won't depart from righteousness. They know what it looks like. Because mom and daddy always pray. And I'm, 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 I'm I didn't want to go on all these stories. I'm thinking about something else. Me and Tasha got into it. <laughs> you, you safe, baby. You safe. You safe. But I said something that I didn't supposed to say. Curse. The kids heard it. And you know when words slip out, you, you can't catch them back. I was trying to catch them and I couldn't. They just, I was trying to catch them back. And my feelings was hurt because my kids... I said, God, why you let me? I haven't said nothing like that in a long time. So you, you, you're getting where I'm going with. So I couldn't believe. I was shocked myself. I can't believe I said that. So me and love was me, London, and Jay. I took him up to Prayer Mountain, and Duncanville was praying. Oh, before I asked, I asked him uh, to forgive me for what I said, and I didn't mean to say what I said, and I was wrong. But what touched me more than anything, they looked at me and they said, Dad, we know who you are. It was, they was ministering to my soul, Dad, we know who you are. You're a man of God. You walk holy all the time. You made a mistake. If God forgave you, we can forgive you too. It blessed my soul. It blessed my soul. I'm telling you, it blessed my soul. For your kids to look at you, for your peers to see you, sometimes you got to do an inventory. Ask somebody, how do they see you? I look my wife sometimes, baby, how do you see me? 
I don't get so caught up into this pastor and, and, and I'll mind whatever title I got. I don't never get caught up. Even with, when I'm carrying that gun, I don't never get caught up in that. That's nothing. But at the end of the day, how do you see me? I ask my kids, how do you see me? Do inventory. That's how you know you've got boundaries. That's how you know. I'm going to read this right, to, right now. Knowing our limitations. Joseph knew his limitations. That's why he ran. To somebody, you better run. The prodigal son didn't know his limitations, but when he came to himself, he was the lowest point of his life. He thought about the love of his father and the safety and security of his father's house. When I think about that, I think about our heavenly father. You know, when you have those bad days, when you don't really feel like yourself, or you don't even feel saved, because you got a whole lot of stuff weighing on your mind, tell somebody it's nothing but the devil. But the Holy Spirit will push this stuff off. The Holy Spirit will tell you who you are. Boundaries. I'm going to get on the Holy Spirit in a minute. Then, Let me say this too. When our restraints are off, we find ourselves in bad places we've never been before. I'm going to say that again. You can write this down if you want to. When our restraints are off, we find ourselves in bad places that we've never been before. When God made us in his likeness, he gave us the responsibilities within limits. On the other hand, God respects the boundaries of our person personality and does not interfere with them. Because he wants us to be mature. You hear that? Because he wants us to be mature, he does not attempt to control our will or run our life. God wants you to be self-governing. Self-governing. You got to work at your own salvation, soul salvation. It's up to you. Now, we can come bring this word to you all the time, all day long, but it's still up to you if you're writing this stuff down. It's still up to you if you're going back, studying, and reading the word. This is how you create boundaries. If you don't have boundaries, you will find yourself in all kinds of pitfalls. The Holy Spirit, that small voice, the word of God, the love of the Father, spiritual conviction, builds a boundary against our flesh. Write that down. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit, which is that small voice, the word of God, the love of the Father, spiritual conviction, Builds a boundary against our flesh. Now, I need some men. Tim, come here. Come here, D. Come here, Sean. This, this, I want to show you what boundaries are. Now, I'm gonna stand in the middle. Uh, I wish Bo was here too. Oh, come here, uh, Eugene. I'm going to show you boundaries. And I, what I, want you, I want you to put your arms together like this. Grab his, grab his hand. I want, I want, I want y'all to I'm gonna do a demonstration about boundaries. I'm in the middle. Come on, Sean. Y'all come around. Come around me. Make a circle around me. Y'all are the boundary. Okay. Now, y'all going to let me walk. Let me walk. I'm just going this way. Go, go, go. Where I go, boundaries go with me. Right? I say I go that way. Where I go, boundaries are always going with me. I'm reading my Bible. Let's go around that way. Well, watch out, watch out. I'm reading my Bible. I'm listening to God. I'm coming to church. Right? But see, this is the problem we make. What we make. Let's go back over here. Come, come on, come on, come on. Let me show you what goes on. 
when we violently go outside. Then let me, let me out. <laughs> Gotta let me out. This is a strong brother. When we violently get out of those boundaries. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm showing you, even though they had a grip on me, the Holy Spirit is trying to keep me. The Word is trying to keep me. But I have to violently get out those boundaries. You see what I'm saying? Y'all can sit down. Thank y'all. I'm trying to make you understand, this is what we do. God is constantly talking to you. God talking to you in dreams. He's talking to people. But you got your mind set on wrong. Come on, man. We too mature to letting Satan play games like that with us. We too mature to let games like that, even our marriage, with friendships. You got married people letting single people speak to you about your marriage. You can't tell me nothing about my marriage. You ain't never been married before. You don't know the ups and downs that comes with marriage. It's a job. Grace and mercy keep us all day long. So you can't talk your mouth on something you don't know nothing about. Even with our kids, we need to have boundaries. We're in this generation where we want to play with our kids. I love them. I love my babies. They know how far to go. And I know how far to go with them. Because I'll tell you, hey, 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 you, you're playing a little bit too much now. I don't have to knock you out now. I'm old school. Ain't nothing wrong with old school. I, I get so tired when people say, it's a new generation. These kids, no, 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 no. God is still God, isn't he? Do God change? So parenting has changed. That's what happened. Parenting has changed. Parenting is not the same. We ask our kids stuff. I tell my son all the time, you can't teach me nothing. Now, you may tell me what's going on in the channel because of you know, current events and stuff you have read or something like that, but life, you can't teach me nothing about life. Yeah, he ain't been here long enough. I mean, my dad should tell me, and I'm, I'm grown. I'm like in my 40s. He would tell me, look here, boy. I don't care how old you get. You'll never get older than me. What he was saying, I got too much wisdom on, on me. See, we came from a generation with respect. We knew what respect was. See, I'm the ninth child in my family. So when my brothers and sisters talk, my, brother, my older brother is 62. So when my brother was talk, we get out the room. We knew better to get out the room. Nobody had to teach us that. You know, they talk. It was just an automatic. When we seen them talk, okay, they talking. When we had get-togethers, uh, when the older, older cousins would talk, we get out the room. When the uncles would talk, we got out the room. We, didn't, we better not stay there and trying to listen. Because somebody, even if mama wasn't there, somebody in that family going to grab you. Still, boundaries. You need to know how far to go. Children need to know how far to go. Parents need to know how far to go. Now, let's go to Titus 2.12. I want you to write this down. Number one, building, building up boundaries. Building up boundaries. And it's Titus 2.12. If you got to say, man. That's close to revelations, y'all. Amen. That's Titus 2.12. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present day. 
I'm going to say it again. Teaching us. Denying ungodliness, worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present, this present day. We're living in the last days, y'all. We can't bring everything in our spirit. If you have the Holy Ghost, you should be protective of the Holy Spirit. That's why I ran out of that place. Let's go. I protect. You see how I'm holding myself? If I see something, oh, no. I, got I protect the Holy Spirit. Oh, I can't watch that. Because I love the Holy Spirit. I just don't have a relationship when I come here. This is a daily thing. I'm grateful for the relationship. I was telling Tasha when I was five years old, I remember having a, having a talk with God. I remember these young kids, they, they see. I knew how I was going to be living at five years old. And God would talk to me about things. But I'm grateful for the relationship that I have with him. I'm grateful for boundaries. To be a believer, we need boundaries. Singles, you need boundaries. Married people, you need boundaries. Children, you need boundaries. Parents, don't let all these kids speak all this kind of stuff in your kid's ear. You're trying to figure out why they're depressed. What they're going through. I'm telling my son right now that stays with me. I said, I got to know your friends. Because that phone, you can't talk to them on the phone. I got to know them. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, you know what? During a week, take the game from him. Take all the electronics from him during a week. Go old school. And I thought it was going to be a fight. It wasn't even a fight. I was, I was getting ready. I'm like, come on. It wasn't even a fight. Parents must understand when it comes to our kids, they want guidance. They don't want no friendship. They want guidance because they don't know. So, number two, keeping boundaries strong. That's Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Keeping boundaries strong. If you got to say Amen. Now, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. You heard that? The fruit, you heard this before. The fruit of the Spirit is love. No, 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 let me say that right. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Did it say God controlling us? Did it say the Holy Spirit controlling us? Self-control, that means I have the mindset to say, hey, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going there. Self-control against such things, there is no law. What law? Okay. The law we're talking about, that's what Jesus died for. Right? The law was a thing that's because of sin in the life. We supposed to be dying. But Jesus said, I'll go. Jesus did not come to change the law. The law still exists. But he came to fulfill the law. What was fulfilling the law? He died. And by dying, he put us in a place, in heavenly places along with him. Now we're in heavenly places along with we have the authority to speak over our mind. We have the authority to speak to the elements. Yes. We have the authority to speak to sickness. Authority. Those that are saved, those that believe, 
those that walks in holiness. Now, if you're walking in sin, you're bound by the law and everything that comes with it. You hear what I'm saying? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness. I got to stop on some of this stuff. Now, as believers, do we see this? Let's be for real. Do I see joy? Do I see peace? Forbearance. Some of us don't have the, we don't even have the, how can I say this? The patience with some people. But to do what we do, we're supposed to have what? Love. Love is the thing that causes us to do what we do. They was, I was at a work the other day. I was trying to see what the big deal was. My boss came to me. It was this one Saturday when I was working, but Monday he came, he said, man, you really, you, you really uh, just touched my heart, man. I said, I touched your heart. Now he said, you warmed my heart. I said, how, how I warm your heart? He said, man, my, my, uh, my pastor, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship pastors, they was recording me. I said, recording? They, yeah, man, they was recording you, man. I said, record me for what? Man, you was out there laying hands on that young lady and praying for her. I said, the homeless lady? That's something I always do. That's what believers are supposed to do. I'm like, you believe it too, right? We talk, having this conversation, that's what we're supposed to do. So what, what, what was so astonishing about that? What was so astonishing about that is because you don't see a, a lot of it. We so busy preaching to each other. And we need to change our mindset what comes about ministry. How long are we going to still be praying and crying about the same thing? And we got people out there right now on drugs, longing for Jesus, longing for somebody to talk to them about the truth. And we still caught up in our stuff. I had to catch myself. Even the stuff I'm going, man, <laughs> the Bible said, cast all your cares. The Holy Spirit is speaking in my ear. Cast all your cares. To me, throw all that stuff off. But we stay in focus on this stuff and meditate on it. Let's go to number three. Galatians 5.13. If you got to say amen. All right. You, my brothers and sisters, we're all called to be free. Write down the word free in big letters. That's number three, free. We're all called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in flesh. Rather, serve one another humble in love. You, my brothers and sisters, we're all called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another. Humble in love. What he's saying, if I'm doing God's work, I'm not idle. I don't have time for Satan to get all this pity party stuff in my head and, and what's going wrong. I have gotten to the point in my life, I'm 47 years old, about to be 48. It's never been a time I haven't been through anything. I'm actually getting used to going through. It's all right. It's no shock to me now. You know, like when everybody, oh, congratulations, you, you're a pastor. I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't feel like, like a congratulations. Because <laughs> I felt weight coming. You know, I, I felt some, some demons, some other demons I never met before. I'm going to have to fight. You know, that's what I felt. You know. But those, they didn't know. They, know, they didn't know. They didn't know. But even with that. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater. So that's my mindset. That should be our mindset. We shouldn't worry about stuff. Now, 
Now, number four. I want you to put down no restraints. This is Romans eleven eighteen through 25. And put no restraints. When you got to say, man, Romans 1, 18 through 25. 1, 18, I'm sorry. 1, 18 through 25. Romans. Right? 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since we may, what may be known about God is plain to them, right? Because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the word God invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. God said, do some stuff I made. I've showed who I am. I showed my glory. I saw, saw glimpses of myself, right? So that people are without excuse. Wow. God said, you have without excuse. You know, even through the stuff I made, you can see my glory. You can see who I am. For although they, they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. And exchanged the glory of immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings. And birds, and animals, and reptiles. You hear that? We do that today. You see this right here? He's talking to the church. You know that, right? Therefore, God gave them over. You heard that? So you got enough stuff and you can kill you. Therefore, God gave them over. And the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurities. For the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And worshiped and served and created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Okay. When I just made the demonstration about taking the restraints off, God would judge us for that. For taking the restraints off. He's because he's saying through simple things. You have seen me. You already know how I am. You, 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 you heard my voice. Even through hearing my voice, I have talked to you in dreams. In just things I have showed you who I am. And you still want to do what you want to do. Tell us about let's get it together. Please, let's get it together. Five. I want you to put down to keep solid boundaries. This is what you got to do to keep solid boundaries. Number five, to keep solid boundaries. Hebrews 10, 25. We know what that is, right? Go to it. I want you to read it. Hebrews 10, 25. If you got to say amen. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in the matter of some is, but exhorting one another so much and more as ye see the day approaching. The day approaching is now. And what it's talking about, the church Forsake not the assembly of the brethren. Ask about where your brother at. Where your sister at. Facebook, I'm talking to you. Where your brother at. 
God said, forsake not the assembly of the brethren. This is how we keep the boundaries strong. If you feel with the Holy Ghost, if you walk in power, if you read your word, and we're walking together, we keep each other in check. You keep me in check. Hey, brother, you shouldn't do that. Hey, man, God been dealing with me about so and so and so. Let me pray with you about this. And we, I, I must say, my brothers, I, I thank God for, for my brothers because we do that well. Man, I love that. I love that how we are. But that's, that's, that's one, of the, one of the ways to keep the, the boundaries solid. Now, this is a little side note, Matthew 10 and 20. When Jesus said this, for we're two or three together, uh, together in my name, there I am in the midst. Again, if you feel the Holy Ghost and we walk in the power of three of us, I guarantee you God will show up. Somebody said, let's read our word. Let's read our word. I got one more. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. This is another way to keep our boundaries stronger. You got to say amen. And it was. He, was. he gave some to be apostles. We heard this many times. Some to be prophets. Some to be evangelists. Some to be pastors and teachers. To equip the saints for works of ministry and build up the body of Christ until we reach unity. I mean, one voice. You hear me? One voice, one mind. Until we all reach unity in faith in the knowledge of the Son of God. As we mature, that's that word mature again. Y'all heard that? As we mature to a full measure of statue of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed about the waves carried around by every wind of teaching by clever cunning men and deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth and love, we will all in all things grow up into Christ himself who is the head from him the whole body fitted and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love through the work of each individual part. Amen. All that saying right there, we need teachers. We need apostles. We need pastors. Those of us who think we can, we can do it on our own, the rogues, I can do it by myself. No. God meant for leadership to be here. That's why we're going in the transition that we're going in right now with new pastors. Family, it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to grow up, family. Now, just a little side note, because I love my pastor. That's my dad. I love him. I love my mom, too. Get the pressure off them. That's why we're here. That's why the pastor's here. If you need somebody to pray with, I'm here. I'm, I'm available. Clinton is available. Tim is available. Damon is available. Sean is available. Mom is available. We're all available. For we can do this work. For we can grow. For we can stay really just in this really... Not disjointed, but together. Now, let's pray. Stand up. I'm done. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that this word, that it rained in the hearts of your people, because it rained in mine. I pray that this be a night that we could bring forth change, that we start by praying the basic things you're calling us back to. Hallelujah. Calling families back to prayer. Not only fa families back to prayer. And I pray more than anything that the, that the prayer life that we have, the fasting life we have, that it be more. It's a need in our house now, Lord God. I thank you for prompting us to do the things you want us to do because the devil is busy. But I ask that you keep your hand on the brothers and sisters here.
keep us safe. I plead the blood of every one of us right now. I plead the blood of a lady T. I plead the blood of an apostle. Keep your hand upon him, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give us the strength to help them, Lord God. Give them strength to walk forward in the things that you have called them to walk through and to do. In Jesus' name, give God praise. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for the word. Amen. That was rich. Definitely applicable. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's one that you want to pull off the shelf and, and get it in your spirit because God is trying to take us somewhere. I know we say that all the time, but God is really speaking to us some strategies and some instructions. This, these words are preemptive. Amen. Based on what is yet to come, we may not see the fullness of it, but God is preparing us because these are things that has the potential to ensnare us. When we don't set boundaries, we know what the word of God says, that when we cast off what? Visions and we cast off restraints, we cast off boundaries, we cast off our check and balances. That's how we, we stay in tune with the Holy Ghost, amen? So we can't just throw off restraints. And we know that we live in a culture that tells us that anything goes, but that's not what God says about it. And it doesn't matter if our culture is changing, we still live by the principles of what? God. We live by the prin principles of kingdom. We live by the principles of hev heaven. And so God don't change rules and order just because everything around us is changing and evolving. And we are to evolve in the spirit as, as the culture is evolving in things that speak against um, the principles and the godliness of God. Amen? Man, I wasn't going to say anything. I got my hat on. My head is a mess, but it's all good. Uh, since when did holiness become a dirty word? Holy has become a four-letter word now. It's a cuss word. The culture has fixed it where, where, you know, all I hear now in church is it don't take all that. That's the new term now, don't take all that. And that's from people, immature people who just want to do what they want to do. Well, do what you want to do, just do it outside of church. Yeah, so the, the word was, was awesome, son. And thank you for not being moved by the, 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 the apparent, uh, apparent immovability of the people. Yeah, you know, but, but holiness is not a cuss word. Holiness has not changed from the day it was first called holy. Righteousness has not changed from the moment it was called righteous. Just because we want to do unrighteous things don't make righteousness wrong. It makes your appetites wrong. And children, babies and children, and it's in the church now. So I'm glad you stressed that this was a word to the church. Because holiness had, uh, unholiness had seeped inside of the church. Now that was, that was a few years after Jesus' departure. So Jesus went long off the earth. Now we're talking about 2,500 years later now. But we're suffering the same thing. But it's going to take the same word from the same, with the same attitude, with the same determination, ticking off the same people that he ticked off back then. Yeah, because it's a spirit. And so you have to wage war against a spirit of unholiness you have to wage war against a spirit of unrighteousness you have to take the rebellion and turn it around because it's a it's a rebellious spirit that causes us to yearn for and to and to desire unholiness and you just take your and you just say i'm not doing that i'm not doing that it's you you can say no to these things the world and, and then i'm finished i just it just blows my mind the world has no problem trying to pull you out of righteousness why we got a problem trying to pull them into righteousness they are not shame or embarrassed at all to do and they do what they do with full strength full determination they don't care what you think about it your ungodly friends or half a christian friends don't have no problem telling asking you inviting you away from church they have no problem telling girl you ain't got to go why are you going today you always go you always go to church. You don't never miss. Yeah, and today is another one of them days. You know, they have zero problem 
trying to pull you out of righteousness. But we are ashamed to, to, to tell them. We get embarrassed to just tell them no. Or no to, no to hell. Since you won't say hell no, no to hell. Hell no. So you talk, I'm, I'm, I'm using it as a noun. Hell no. Just inverting, to, you're saying, saying, I'm saying no to hell. Hell no. Say hell no. And when every time they come to you with some hell, hell no. You cussing, you supposed to be a Christian. No. You coming to me with hell. And I'm telling hell no. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, it's okay, y'all. It's okay to be righteous. That's all he was saying. It's okay to be holy. Yeah, it's okay to not to 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 say no to the trends. And especially this climate, and I'm through. Especially this climate here of it don't take all of that. No, it did that. Man, you know how big a trick of the devil that is? When God is demanding more, God is demanding an increase, and the devil is trying to tell you we don't take all of that. And Christians are falling, are, are, are falling to that mess with things. We're, we're allowing ourselves to be cursed with some things God to be meant to be a blessing. All my babies that's getting new houses, don't stay home and put up curtains. You know, <laughs> I'll wash your car and late for church. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying? This, the, the, those are not things that God gave you. To, but the blessings of God make it rich and addeth no sorrow. But I promise you, if you allow those things, if we allow those things to, be, to pull us out of the presence of God, they will become a curse. It will become a curse. That was a great word, son. That was a great word. Amen. 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 Holy is, is still. Woo! Is still the standard. Woo! Ah, yeah. Holiness is still the standard. It is still the righteous standard. It is still, there is still a blood-stained banner. Hallelujah of Jesus Christ. And some of us go hold it high. The old-fashioned mentality of holiness. They call holiness old-fashioned in the church. Since when is holiness run, have a shelf life? Huh? Since when is holiness out of style? What's holiness out of style? All I know is in me, God is telling me, get up longer. Get up, get up now. now, now, now you, this, you used to pray this long, now I need you in this long. I need you, ah, I need you to stop looking at the clock, period. Give me the, yeah, I need you to come in the closet where you got time. When, when time is not an issue. But, 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 we, but it don't take all of that? Yeah, the devil is a lie. And this church, we say, hell no. Come on, everybody say it. You little ones too. Say hell Now, you can't say that to your parents. <laughs> Not out of context. <laughs> All right, y'all, be standing in class because your teacher ain't going to understand this, this sermon. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. I was, I was talking to one of, my, well, one of my little sons. I was talking to Trey. He came to the house, and he was saying that one of the teachers was trying to tell him that, that we were all asexual. Yeah, that that he was he was both male and female. No, oh, what? That would qualify, but don't do it. All right. Yeah, that's some hell. You could say hell no to. <laughs> but I'm but pop telling you don't do it. All right. Don't do it. All right. Amen. Amen. Come on, one more time. Give God some glory for that word. Come on, that was awesome. Give God some glory. That's all he was saying. That holiness is still the only standard, the righteous standard. Amen. Come on, ushers. Come on up. Hallelujah. If you need an offer an envelope, raise your hand, uh, and the ushers will come around. Amen. If you need an offer, can you please raise your hand?